Dear colleagues, with this presentation we would like to highlight the main findings of our search conducted on the potential of Ukrainian higher educational establishments to, to satisfy the demand in personnel for renewable energy development. The study has been carried out at the Cherkasy State Technological University by Oksana Zaharova and Lyudmila Usek. And today the speaker is Lyudmila Usek. The research aimed to analyze if the Ukrainian higher educational establishments are prepared to satisfy the predicted demand in personnel needed to ensure sustainable development of the renewable energy market. The study addressed three issues. First, we analyzed the contingent of students majoring in electric power engineering, electrical engineering and electromechanics, who are studying educational programs in renewable energy. Based on the qualitative data and the experience of realizing educational programs in renewable energy, we have formulated the markers of an educational program's success. Finally, based on the above, we attempted to devise recommendations for increasing the number of highly qualified specialists in renewable energy on the Ukrainian labor market in the post-war period. Based on the vast literature highlighting various aspects of renewable energy development globally, as well as uh, Ukraine's experience in this field, we can formulate two basic conditions that are able to ensure sustainable growth in renewable energy. The first condition is um, to actively deploy technical means and innovative engineering solutions to develop renewable energy in Ukraine. And the second uh, indispensable condition is regular personal supply. And here um, an effort is required of Ukraine because Ukraine has to provide for this condition independently and autonomously. Uh, the statistical data for the research were obtained from the sources that are mentioned on this slide uh, and which are represented by mainly by governmental websites and electronic databases. Uh, to start with, in this section, I would like to briefly discuss the background of renewable energy development in Ukraine in terms of the legislation and its history. The idea of strengthening the role of renewable energy in the Ukrainian economy has been around for the past two decades and was not inspired by the war or the blackouts. In the Ukrainian legislation, the first normative documents highlighting the development of renewable energy date back to 2009, as we can see in the slide. In October 2014, the Cabinet of Ministers of Ukraine approved the National Renewable Energy Action Plan for the period until 2020. Um, the full text of our article uh, contains several comments on the document and its today's relevancy. In December 2017, Ukraine joined the Charter and in February 2018 became a full member of the International Renewable Energy Agency. Um, participation in, the, in this association enabled Ukraine to access the world-class experience and knowledge in developing and implementing technologies for utilizing renewable energy. In the years preceding the war, the share of renewable energy in the structure of domestic production in Ukraine fluctuated within the range of 7 to 10 percent. These data imply that it has not yet been possible to fully utilize the potential of renewable energy. One of the reasons is the failure to provide the industry with highly qualified personnel. And it is worth mentioning that the national plan did not pay due attention to this issue. Uh, at the moment, training specialists um, capable of being directly engaged at renewable energy facilities in Ukraine is being delivered within two specialist, uh, specialties, 141 power engineering, electrical engineering and electromechanics, and 145 hydropower. This slide presents the territorial distribution of educational institutions training students in, uh, in specialties related to energy. 
The largest number of educational institutions are concentrated in the Ukrainian cities of Kharkiv, Kyiv and Dnipro, which is natural and predictable since these cities represent uh, highly developed industrial regions. <coughs> Uh, in the next part of my presentation, um, I would like to mention some qualitative data that we have obtained, because these data have some significance in terms of the issues we are studying here. Uh, so first, I would like to comment on the numbers of students majoring in electric power engineering, electrical engineering, and electromechanics. At bachelor's level, as you can see, slightly less than 400 students in total are enrolled on all the accredited educational programs in all the four years of study. And in the slide, you can see the four uh, universities um, preparing uh, the highest numbers of, uh, of students. An implication of this finding is that qualified graduated bachelors will replenish the labor market gradually and will uh, not uh, immediately enable intensive development of the renewable energy sector. In addition, some of these students will continue their studies at graduate programs and will enter the labor market in another one and a half or even two years. At the master's educational level, as we can see, 91 student is enrolled. If these students do not choose to continue their studies at any of the postgraduate schools, they will enter the Ukrainian labor market in January, February 2024 or 2025. Uh, one more specialty that we have mentioned today is hydropower. Uh, and here we can see that only three Ukrainian universities train specialists in hydropower at undergraduate and graduate levels. These statistical data suggest that Ukrainian higher education institutions possess enough potential to prepare about 500 graduates in two renewable energy specialties by 2026. Uh, this number may satisfy the need to um, neutralize the processes related to staff turnover at the existing facilities facilities. However, ensuring the expected increase in the share of renewable energy in Ukraine is unlikely to be achieved with these numbers of graduates. Uh, the evidence received by analyzing the most successful educational programs uh, enable enabled us to formulate the markers that measure the performance and quality, or in more simple words, they measure how successful the educational program is. So marker number one, highly professional teaching staff involved in delivering the educational program, their high scientific potential and practical workplace experience uh, in the field of renewable energy, and their command of foreign languages is, is also important. Marker number two, providing the educational pro process for the educational programs with modern certified laboratories with high-tech equipment. A positive example here is Cherkasy State Technological University and more details you can find in, in our article. Marker number three, close cooperation and the availability of double degree programs with the universities abroad. Marker number four, introducing a practice-oriented approach to education. This can be illustrated by a positive example of Lviv Polytechnic National University. And again, um, you can find more details in our article. Uh, marker number uh, five, possibilities to uh, offering the students the possibilities to participate in international academic mobility programs. Um, the mobility may take one or two semesters. Uh, replication or targeting these markers will significantly in enhance the existing educational programs in renewable energy. And these markers may also define the quality standards for new educational programs that are going to be opened in renewable energy. Uh, in summary, the results of this research show that the current numbers of specialists trained in renewable energy will not facilitate intensive development of renewable energy uh, announced by the Ukrainian government. 
Thus, we would like to offer several directions that, taken together, will form a strategy to reach higher numbers of highly qualified specialists in renewable energy in the Ukrainian labor market in the post-war period. Uh, so, number one, uh, increasing the level of remuneration in, in, in the renewable energy sector in Ukraine will enhance uh, the sector. Uh, recommendation number two, ensuring more investment into the development of human capital, satisfactory working conditions and sufficient social package at renewable energy enterprises in Ukraine. Special attention should be paid to the social protection of young professionals and the development of their talents. Uh, the next recommendation uh, concerns professional development and retraining, expanding, expanding opportunities for professional development and retraining for specialists from the primary and secondary labor markets um, will also uh, enhance the development of renewable energy market. Uh, Num the next recommendation. This is enhancing the current educational programs to satisfy accreditation requirements. In this context, it is important to focus on the best practices of the world's leading universities. The next recommendation is enriching the existing curricula with the disciplines that acquaint students with the leading global experience in the field of renewable energy. The basics of international energy standards and sustainable uh, development management. Uh, one more recommendation is for those uh, universities uh, which train exclusively bachelors or exclusively masters in renewable energy. So it would be advisable to launch educational programs at another educational level as well. The next strategy is launching new educational launching new educational programs in renewable energy at both undergraduate and uh, graduate levels. Uh, next, uh, increasing the professional and qualification level of lecturers and teachers participating in delivering renewable energy educational programs. Uh, the next strategy or direction is increasing the prestige of the entire spectrum of professions relating related to renewable energy uh, related to renewable energy. And uh, to recap my presentation, I would like to mention that implementing the above measures will fetch significant social, economic and ecological effect. We are thankful for your attention and we will welcome your questions now. Thank you, dear colleagues.